It has been such a pleasure the last few days being here with you, the rest of the PSIers, and with Mandy, my new BFF, <laughs> sister from another mother. I think that we have much work to do, and we are excited to begin. Let me say how happy I am to be home. Someone asked me, is this weather normal? No, it's better than normal. And we ordered it especially for our visitors. That's how we trainees are. We go the extra mile. Thank you to the audience for joining us today. You took time out of your day to be here. And a special shout out to my childhood friend, Susan, for dropping everything and being here this morning. We've known each other since we were five years old. My mentor and teacher, Dr. Brene Brown, says this, loving ourselves through the process of owning our story is the bravest thing we'll ever do. We all have a story. Some stories are happy, some not so happy. We have the choice to morph and transform every single story into something that will move the world to a better, more positive place. My story is about resilience, compassion, and strength. And I'm not unique. We all have those qualities. My story is about the power of one, the power we all possess, a future of gender-free violence, gender violence free, right? <laughs> Starts with a daily action from each of us. And that's where my story started. I didn't realize that I was abused until I had a child. And let me tell you the extent to which I didn't realize. When I was about 23, I remember telling one of my parents that if they loved me, they would hit me like the other parent. I can still see the pain on the face of the parent who was not the abuser. At 23, I was thoroughly brainwashed into thinking that love and pain went hand in hand. If somebody loved me, surely, they were supposed to hurt me. I was under that illusion for another seven years. I married at 30, had my first child at 31. And I'm sorry to tell you that when that baby was two weeks old, I wanted to hit him. I didn't want to, you know, say, oh, come on. I wanted to hurt the baby. And I was shocked. How could I love this helpless little thing with all of my being and feel the rage in my hand wanting to slap? Desperately wanting to slap. The baby was crying and in my twisted brainwashed mind, I thought if I hit him, he would stop crying. Imagine. I would give the baby who was already in pain more pain and expect it to be the cure. I was very fortunate that I had chosen a man who had never been abused in his life. He had never been struck. He had never been screamed at. He'd never been yelled at. He'd never been called names. He had never been belittled. So I took the baby to him and I said, Something is wrong with me. I want to hit our baby. But then I said something else. I said, please promise me if I ever hit this child, you will take him away from me. And I said that because I used to wish that someone would take me away from the abuse that I was facing. And no one ever did. He promised. And I know he's a man of his word. And he said, get help. And from that day till this day, it had been a daily journey, figuring out how to parent 
from love and patience and understanding and acceptance and not from rage. It is a lifelong journey. I know that many of you here have similar stories and I want you to know if I can change, you can change. I'm not that special. I just love my children and I know that you do too. Violence against women is one of the greatest epidemics of all time. Indeed, it is a pandemic. It touches all aspects of society. It does not discriminate between rich and poor, educated or uneducated, political affiliations or non-affiliations, between West, Central, East, or South Trinidad. We are all affected by gender violence. It remains shocking to me that one in three women worldwide will be or have been victims of domestic violence. Which means, if we count out in this room, every third woman here will be able to say, yes, I too have been affected. That's a normal statistic. Let's make that statistic not normal. Let us feel the very depths of our soul when we hear a statistic like that. We are shocked and we get to say, no. We're going to fix this, we're going to change it. It needs to be zero women. Someone said to me, why don't you just like pick a number, 25%, 50%, why does it have to be 100%? And I said to that person, so would you like it to be your mother, your sister, your daughter? Because if you want me to pick a number, somebody's mother, sister, or daughter is being left out. Are you volunteering your family? Guess what? It's 100%. Gender violence threatens family structures. Children suffer emotional damage when they watch their mothers and their siblings being beaten. So imagine, the child is hit right before school, mom is bleeding, siblings are crying, then they are sent to school by themselves on public transportation and they have to come home with great grades. They have to stuff all of those emotions. And if they don't have great grades, guess what happens when they come home? They get beaten again. And they have to do the same thing over and over. And nobody ever says to them when they get to school, are you okay? What is that bruise about? Why are your eyes swollen? It's just suck it up and do it. Let's end the sucking up. Let's just end gender violence. Homes break when there is violence. Mothers who are already scarred are left to lead the homes. They have to go out to work. A lot of them have not, no qualifications to make enough money to put food on the table and to pay the bills. And again, the cycle begins. Outer scars can heal. If somebody breaks my arm, I can find a good doctor. I can heal the scar. Everybody around might see the cast and say, oh, can I sign your cast? I can feel like I'm getting compassion. What about the inner scars? Nobody sees, very few of them heal. Very few. I know that you all know what I'm talking about. Survivors of gender violence often vent their frustrations on the less powerful, the children and the elderly. There's a huge problem with elder violence in our society. I hope that most of you know how serious the problem is. I'm sure that I'm preaching to the choir. Yesterday, I had the honor of being in the field, and I'm deeply moved by all the work you're doing. Liz, where's Liz? Amazing work. Thank you, my friend. And Mama Toto, oh my gosh, that birthing center almost makes me want to have another baby, but not really. <laughs> I just want the experience. Um, if you haven't visited these two places, Please ask these ladies if you can have a visit, because I know that you will want to help their cause. 
the when we were at the shelter, there was a brand new woman who walked in. She said she was from the mountains. And Mandy thought, mountains? Where are the mountains? She really means our little foothills here in Trinidad that we call mountains. She had just left her abuser. She said she was being abused for almost five years. She said there were many times she had broken body parts. She would just tape it up and go to work. She was so scared, she was shaking. The only thing I could do for her was give her some breathing exercises to ground her back in her body. No amount of talk was getting through to her. I was glad we were there. Mandy was able to help her move her luggage up the stairs. Marshall helped her move her stuff. She was so happy to have some help. She said she's used to just doing everything herself. We later facilitated a round table at the U.S. Embassy, and I see Mr. Weeks back there. Hi. Thank you so much for having us yesterday. It was wonderful. The kids were from fourth, fifth, and lower sixth. We asked, does anyone here have any experience with violence at home? Have you heard about it? Have you seen it? Every single child raised their hand. Out of 20, we had 20 raised hands. So now I'm going to ask you, please raise your hand if you know of somebody who has experienced violence, if you have experienced violence, or if you've heard somebody being violated. Please look around. It's the majority of this audience. And we are the caregivers, right? It's happening to us. It's happening everywhere. One of the saddest responses when we asked the young people, what do you think you do about gender norms? There was a 15-year-old boy who said, well, I think it's too late for me. I think maybe I could help my children. That was so sad. He's 15. His life hasn't even begun yet. And he thinks it's too late for him. We have to reach our children. We have to tell our children that they have the power to change the gender norms. If they don't change, we are not going to change. Our children have to be empowered to tell us, hey mom, you're losing it. Hey dad, you're losing it. Stop hitting, stop screaming, stop yelling. Can we just have a discussion? That's what I think. Once again, I want to tell you how heroic you all are. Through my work, and now my collaboration with PSI Caribbean in Trinidad and Tobago, a platform is being created for all of us in this room to actually do something greater than ourselves, bigger than we ever thought. I would like to ask a few things of you today. We all live in homes. We all have families. We're all in communities. The one thing that you could do today that would make the biggest difference is to go home and say to your families, can we open up a discussion in this house about violence? Can we talk about what happened in the past? Can we talk about how not moving it forward into the future? There are many resources on this lovely island to help you with this conversation. All you have to do is ask for it. Number two, let's include men and boys in our programming. If you have a son, go home today and say to him, when you hear violence against women and girls, what does it bring up in you? What do you think about? Listen, don't interrupt him, let him talk. Give him a pass with whatever he says. Do not judge. Let us bring the men and boys into the conversation. Ask your husband. Take him for a date. Buy him a glass of wine and say, you know what? I need to ask you a hard question. Think of this. Number three, let's integrate gender violence services into all of our health delivery interventions and programs and clinics. 
Whenever there's a woman in front of you, ask the question, are you experiencing violence? And if the answer is positive, give her a referral. 800-SAVE is a magical number. They can start there. They can describe what the problem is. They will be given the right referral pathway. Let us come together, private sector, public sector, and civil society. Let us invest our energies, our money, our hearts, our brains. Let us each give what we can. Everything counts. When it comes right down to it, it's the power of one. I had a crazy dream after I finished that triathlon when I was 50. Maybe, maybe I could affect gender violence initiatives globally. And then PSI found me, and they made it possible. Thank you so much.